Yo, what's up? So today I'm going to show you how to create a Minecraft server on a Raspberry Pi. So this is a small computer that costs only 40 bucks and you can create a Minecraft server on it and run it 24-7. It's just a small box. It's really small, so it's pretty cool. I already did a video reviewing when I made the Minecraft server. So if you want to see um, a Minecraft server running on it and testing how, how it lags and stuff like that, check, check out the link in the description. Also, for, for all the programs that I'm using in the video, there's a link in the description below, so check it out. And also all the commands. So now I just plugged in uh, the SD card into the adapter and plugged in the adapter to the computer. And now we have to format the, the card. So just click on format and uncheck the quick uh, format and click start so and okay and now this is gonna take a long time so I'm just gonna cut the widow and yeah see you when it's done so now it's done and click OK and now we can close all the windows and open up the program that's called um, Etcher so this is also the link is in the description below you can download it um and now once this opens so yeah here we go just close this because it doesn't really matter and yeah we have to pick our sd card here so click on change and it already automatically cho chose the sd card so now we can select the image file that the link is in the description below i already downloaded it but i'm gonna show you um where you can get it so basically it's a website the link is in the description just i use the raspberry stretch with desktop and recommended software uh, and just clip the download zip and un unzip the file and you will see an image inside of the folder that's created once you unzip the file so once you did that you can just select the image and now we can click flash so this is also going to take a long time so i'm going to also cut the widow until it's done so once it's done um it's going to also check if um it's going to open all these programs and you have to close it if don't click just click um cancel and x and x everywhere just close it don't click anything else and now it's validating and this is also going to take a long time basically it's checking if everything is loaded completely so as you see it's successful so now we can uh, close this and yeah uh, now we can unplug the adapter from the computer and we can take out our sd card and yeah so let me take out the sd card and now let's put the sd card into the raspberry pi I have some difficulties with the camera but yeah so let's put in the SD card into the Raspberry Pi it's pretty hard to do this with one hand because I'm recording with one hand and putting the SD card into the Raspberry Pi okay once you've done that um now you can plug in the power supply for the raspberry pi and the keyboard and the mouse so basically you will need a mouse a keyboard and a plug-in for the a power supply and an hdmi uh, so for display so basically as you see this is all fast forwarded or whatever is it called so basically it will take a little longer So now let's click next and next and now you have to type your password in for that you will later use to connect with an SSH server. So basically we don't have to plug in a keyboard and mouse all the time. So basically type your password in and remember it because you will need it later. So yeah, let's um, connect to our Wi-Fi. So basically, yeah. 
this is my Wi-Fi and yeah, let's click next and type the password from your Wi-Fi connection. And now it's connecting to Wi-Fi. So now let's click next to update everything. And this is also going to take a long time. So, so I'm just going to skip until it's done. So let's click next and it's checking for updates. This is going to take a long time. So now system is up to date. Okay. And re reboot. So now I'm also going to fast forward this because it takes a long time. Here we go. Okay, so now all we have to do is go under the uh, preferences and Raspberry Pi configuration. So here we have to go under interfaces and turn on the SSH. So click enable and okay, this is basically it. So now once this is done, you have to, to open the terminal and type if config. So this is basically the same as on the the Windows computers, you have to type ipconfig, here it's ifconfig. So yeah, once you've done that, uh, you have to remember the IP address that's uh, was display displayed, so we can connect to our SSH server. So yeah, all the command that I, all the commands that I type in, it's if you don't see it on the screen, because it's blurry, because I'm recording with my phone, so basically all the commands are in the description below and yeah so let's switch to the desktop recording so now all we have to do is open up Paddy. so basically if you don't have already the program installed the link is in the description also so yeah uh, and type in the 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 ip address that you saw in the if config so basically it's this so now you have to log in and type in username is pi and your password that you set up at the start when you started the raspberry pi so basically whatever i, I told you the password that you have to remember so basically enter it in there so now i typed um i checked all the folders and we made a folder called mc server so m k d i R means uh, make directory. So basically, we made uh, uh, a di directory called MC server, and we moved with the terminal into the into the folder. So basically, as you see, we are into MC server folder. So now we have to install our Java. So you have to type sudo apt get the update. And now sudo apt get install default JDK. Basically, the link for the commands is in the description. So now we have to type uh, Y. Um, yeah, and it's working. So I'm going to also for fast forward this because it's going to take a long time. So basically, the reason we used Putty is so we don't have to have anything connected to our Raspberry Pi anymore. So we can unplug the screen, we can unplug the keyboard, we can unplug the mouse. And basically, with Putty, we can connect to the terminal from uh, Raspberry Pi. So basically, you can use your computer that you have at home uh, to connect to your Raspberry Pi. So it's much easier to use. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. That's the reason we used Putty. So you just you have to have plugged in your power supply to your Raspberry Pi and once you turn it on and wait a couple seconds till the operating system boots up you can just connect with your desktop to the um, SSH server with Putty. Okay so now when this is done I type the command clear so that's why we got a clear window. So yeah now we have to download our file so our jar file for our Minecraft server so basically you can download speakers or everything, so we we will download paper. So the link for that is in the description. We copied the download and address and typed w get and pasted the link. So basically, we just right clicked. So basically, we um, pasted it. So now when this is done, we can type the command dir and as you see, it's located in our folder MC server. So now we have to rename it so it's easier to find it later that we'll use a command to run our Minecraft server. So now type mv paperclip and 
uh, type the name correctly and again type a name that we will rename it to. So I will rename it to spigot.jar. So now, as you see, it's called spigot.jar. So now we will actually, uh, finally, we will actually start our Minecraft server. So now all we have to do is type our command. So basically I'm just gonna paste it in because it's a complicated command and yeah. So uh, we have to type uh, one gigabyte, not six gigabytes. So basically change it to one and, and press enter. So now it's loading up and meanwhile we can um, start our Minecraft. So yeah, we started uh, Minecraft 1.13.2 and click multiplayer and now we have to wait until this is done so basically it's gonna take a long time so i'm just gonna skip it again and it's gonna take some time and after it's done it's gonna ask for basically we'll have to change eula so to do that um we have to type uh, nano eula dot text and go into the eula and type true and type uh, control X and control. Uh, we have to type control X and save it. And after you do that, uh, we have to click enter. And now we have to run again the Minecraft server and type the command again that you run the Minecraft server at the start. So basically, yeah. Now it's loading and it's done. So now we can type our IP address. That's the same that we used for connecting to the SSH server to the party. So now we have to refresh it and wait a little bit. And is it gonna work? Is it gonna work? So it's loading, it's gonna take uh, some time. Connecting to the server, logging in, encrypting and is it working? It's gonna take a long time. I'm just, I'm not gonna uh, fast forward this because it's, I wonder if it's gonna work. Is it gonna work? Of course it's gonna work. Joining world, loading terrain. And we got our official Minecraft server on a $40 computer that you can run 24 seven and yeah it's loading terrain still but it's gonna work here we go we're in our minecraft server and yeah that's it basically but wait a minute so when we close the party so basically when we close the party the server is gonna automatically close also because it's not running in the background it's running right now so basically if you close the terminal it also will um stop the Minecraft server. So now what we have to do is load Tmux so the server will run in the background. So basically we can close this. And as you see, the server also closed. So we have to install Tmux. So basically with Tmux, we can run the server in the background and the server is not gonna uh, stop once we close our party program. So basically it's gonna run 24 seven and it's not gonna stop. So let's log in again type pi and your password and now all we have to do is uh, type in the command to install team tmux so to do that is it's called sudo apt-get get um, install tmux and that's it so once it's installed let me just wait a second okay uh, type y and enter now it's working and let's wait until it's installed. Okay, so when it's done, all you have to do to, to run Tmux is just wait a second. Okay, now it's done. Now let's type clear to clear the terminal. So type Tmux and that's it. So now we have to move to the folder again because we are located at the desktop. So type cdmc server so now we are in the folder and we can run the the spigot file again and now it's loading and we're loading our minecraft server again so now okay wait until it starts it's gonna be qu pretty quick and it's done so now we can connect again to the minecraft server 
and for some reason we're gonna get some errors but don't worry about them because they don't really mean anything the server works perfectly and it's not gonna no basically the so the server will still work for some reason there are some errors in this bigot file but yeah it's gonna work but it's gonna take some time until it starts so yeah we're connecting and joining world and we are in the micro server so now if we close our uh, terminal so basically if we closed our party program the server is still gonna be up so basically yeah if you want the review of the micro server so basically what's the lag how many players you can have on your micro server and if it's a loud computer Basically, it's just a small computer and doesn't have a cooler, so it's quiet, you don't really hear it. But basically, yeah, if you want to check out the other video I made on the microservice, so basically, I reviewed it, how it works, if we blow up a village with a TNT and see if it crashes um, the microserver that's running on this small computer and all that stuff, battles with monsters and stuff like that. So, if you want to see that video, Check it out, the link is in the description below. Every, for every command I used in the if in this tutorial, it's in the description below. So basically I used a website where you can paste stuff. So basically it's all the commands are out there. So basically just look in the description below. And also all the program I used are the links for the programs are in the descriptions. And yeah, that's basically it. I closed the party and the micro is still running. So as you see, everything works perfectly. So this is the tutorial. If you have any questions, please comment down below in the comments below. I will be answering them all the time because if it was confusing for you or anything, if it doesn't work, please comment down below. I will help you. And yeah, this is basically it. If you haven't subscribed to this channel already, please subscribe or consider su subscribing. I will post more videos now on this channel and yeah, subscribe and have a nice day and have fun with your Minecraft server. And peace. I'm on a new level. I'm on a new level. I'm on a new level. I'm on a